What's up YouTube, Jeff back again today on the very exciting Samsung video for you guys. And today, it's a big day. People are getting One UI 6.1. It's rolling out to the S23 series, the Z Fold 5, Z Flip 5, the Tab S9 Ultra. I personally received it on all of my devices except for my unlocked Z Fold 5 unit here in the US. So if you haven't unlocked Z Fold 5, you may not have gotten it yet. Some of the carriers have. But today I'm gonna give you guys first 10 things you should do when you get your One UI 6.1 update. I've been using it on the S24 Ultra for a while, and while not all of the features are coming from the S24 Ultra to the S23 and Z Fold 5 and all those other devices, most of them are, including most of the AI features. So that's what we're gonna get into today. Chapters will be below if you wanna skip around a little bit, and uh, I'll have my little outline, my keep document, as always. I'd like to thank my three-year-old son, Jonathan, for giving us some dinos for the video. We've got the Pashi Silifosaurus and the Ed Montagna. Always uh, appreciate him giving us some dinos for the video. Also want to remind you, if you're new to the channel, check out my alpha link. You can find my latest video, the website. Sign up for our newsletter. We do a mystery box where every Samsung launch. If you order a new Samsung phone through our affiliate link, you get a free case, cleaning kit, desktop phone stand. We also randomly insert Amazon gift cards, Google Play credit, and other really cool bonuses. We'll be doing the Z Fold 6, Z Flip 6 coming up. That'll be in the description if you want to check it out. So here are those first 10 things. As I mentioned, let's first talk about the big one, the elephant in the room the Galaxy AI advanced features. So if you go into the settings in One UI 6.1, you scroll down to advanced features, at the very top, you will see the advanced intelligence option. So right here is advanced intelligence, and you'll see you've got a whole bunch of different options for what you can enable. Now, there's a couple of things that you wanna look at. First of all, you wanna look at each of these options and decide if you wanna turn them on. So I'll kind of just go through them, talk about what each of these does. The phone option allows you to get real-time translation during voice calls. Samsung Keyboard has a couple of different options. You've got chat translation. The one I use the most is called Style and Grammar. With Style and Grammar, I turn this on. It lets you basically choose how to write your uh, post or emails or whatever you want in certain style, like for social media, for work, et cetera. It's a really cool feature. I honestly don't use translation a lot. I imagine probably a lot of people don't, but if you do interface with people who speak other languages a lot, it's useful. Interpreter, also obviously very useful for that as well. Or if you are on vacation or something, you need to use this. That's there for your use. You do have to download some of those language packs, which can also be very large files. So just keep that in mind if you're not on Wi-Fi. Samsung Notes. Uh, the Samsung Notes, the best thing about this is it'll let you summarize your notes and also correct spelling and grammar errors. I've been using this a lot because I use my S Pen a lot. My current job at the university where I you know, answer a lot of student emails, teaching math, it's great for that. And I use this to kind of get some summaries of hints that I send to students and things like that organize my outlines for exams, a really cool feature there. Voice recorder, the voice recorder has a couple of really cool things. I made a full video about this, which I'll drop below that dives into these features really in depth. Summaries, uh, and then you can also download the language packs here. The summary will basically let you go ahead and record something as a voice note, and you can get a full summary in text and export that, upload it to your Google Drive, to your Dropbox, whatever you wanna do. Uh, Samsung Internet has some features. If you don't use Samsung Internet, instead you use Google Chrome, these won't be available in Chrome, so just FYI. I tend to use Chrome a little more than Samsung Internet, although I switch back and forth to both. Summarize lets you summarize what's on a web page. I use this though sometimes for doing research for videos. Translate lets you translate. So if you have another language there, you can go ahead and do that. Again, you do have to have this enabled and use as well the browser, which is the Samsung Internet browser built in. Again, you're gonna need to download all the languages you want. So if you want something like Chinese or Arabic or those other languages, English and Spanish is what's on there on the US unlocked version by default. Okay, let's go back. Photo editor, now this one, I'm gonna talk about more later in this video. You should definitely try some of these edits and I'll talk about this specifically because I think this is one of the consumer facing features that are gonna be the most interesting to people. Generative edit lets you adjust the angle of images, extract objects from your images. You can move them, resize them, fill in the gaps. You can copy and paste them to other photos. Really cool stuff you can do with the generative edits inside the gallery. I'm gonna talk about that later in the video with the gallery features. Now, the other thing that you should think about when you're enabling the advanced intelligence features is whether or not you want to enable this option, which is to process data only on the device. If you do this, it won't process any of your data using Galaxy AI in Samsung's cloud. So obviously that's more privacy focused, but keep in mind that that'll also slow it down. And they also tell you here that some of the features will not be available if you do this. Now, I tried enabling this for a while and I didn't notice any real changes in what was available to me but your mileage may vary, just keep that in mind, especially since we have a bunch of different devices now with the update, Fold, Flip, S23, S24, not all of them may have the same restrictions when you enable that, so just keep it in mind if you want that extra privacy. 
Okay, so that's the first thing. Of course, this big update is all about the AI, and so I wanted to get that out of the way. Now, another feature that is also AI related is the circle to search feature. So what you can do here is if you go into the Google Chrome browser, for instance, go back to my alpha link, very at the bottom, just hold down in the very middle here, and this will pop up, and you can just circle something, like maybe my icon, and it will go ahead and find related things. Now, it doesn't always find the exact thing, but look at this, I only circled this tiny little corner of my thumbnail for my video last night, and it did find my video post where I shared it to Twitter right here. It's like the eighth result. It also brings up some other related videos from other creators, so it definitely does a good job of getting pretty close. Now, you can also use this to not only get search results, but you can use two fingers to zoom and pan around the image like this, and also up here at the top, you can see you can change from your Google search history as well because circle to search does contribute to that. Now, if you long press on this, for instance, you can see you can kind of just slide it around there. You can also extract the text from whatever it is that you've selected on there as well inside the circle to search feature. So this is very useful. You can also now uh, coming up, use circle to search for translate. That's not available just yet, but you will be able to use this to translate web pages eventually as well. I found myself using circle to search quite a lot on the S24 Ultra in the last few months. The next thing is something you may have noticed while I was doing that, and that is bringing back the option to hide the nav hint. This drove people crazy when the S24 came out. You'll notice when you're browsing around a web page at the bottom here, or if I'm in my Twitter feed, I don't have the navigation hint. So if you use navigation gestures, there's usually a hint there at the bottom. Now, there was a way to remove this, but Samsung has actually taken that option away from some people. This was the process. I made a full video on this, which again, I'll drop below. But since there is a little caveat, I want to discuss it. They made the option inside of the good lock module called Navstar to enable extra gesture settings. And this is a post that my friend Tarun over on Twitter, who's great follow if you want Samsung software updates and leaks. You can download Navstar, enable extra gesture settings, and then you can turn off the gesture hint. Now, I'll show you that this actually is enabled here on my device because I downloaded the version of this where it was working. If I go to display and I scroll down here, you'll see if I go to navigation bar, right in here under navigation bar, I have more options and you see gesture hint is right here and I just turn that off. So now once it's off, no problem, you won't see the gesture hint. However, the original option in Navstar, which he's talking about, has been removed in one of the most recent updates, at least on the S24 series. So if you go into GoodLock and download Navstar, this is the module he's talking about. If you go to Navstar, there was an option right below it that said extra gesture options. You can see as of the most recent update here on my device, this has been removed. And you can see from the screenshot Tarun posted, he actually posted a screenshot that was originally what it looked like, enable extra gesture settings. It was right below allow back gestures in full screen. So you may have to download the older APK in order to get this functionality back. So just keep that in mind. I'll drop the link to APK mirror for the old Navstar version if you don't see an extra gesture settings in your current version of Navstar once you download it in GoodLock. I just wanted to bring this to people's attention because a lot of people are talking about this method to enable the extra gesture settings and remove that hint, but it might not work. You may need the old APK. Okay, so that's a very important one. Yes, you can still use circle to search, a lot of people ask, if you enable this and remove the hint, can you still use circle to search? And the answer is, of course, you can. Up next are those gallery options that I was talking about. So there's two of them that I want to touch on that I think you should absolutely try once you get One UI 6.1. The first one pertains to video. So let me actually go down and find a video here I took of my son yesterday on his slide. What you can do is you can press down, long press, and it turns the video into slow-mo. You see how he's going very slowly down the slide? And then if you let go, it goes back to the regular speed. So this is really, really cool. You can basically make any video in slow-mo that you want. And the other cool thing is if you do the slow-mo, like let's say I do this, I let it go, and then I do slow-mo again, and then I let it go. If I tap on edit down here, once I tap on edit, it's gonna say under adjust speed, this is the slow-mo speed you just previewed. So when I did the long press, it'll save that. And then once I have that speed kind of saved, I can go up and save the video in that speed that I just looked at. So you can see, I can choose whatever speed I want for each one. I can kind of clip the video, you know, change, the, change it here or there. I can crop it, do whatever I want. I can apply a filter. 
And then I can go up here and save it. And you can see, it says save over the original to keep the original edited versions, save as a copy. This is really important. When you do edit a video or anything in gallery, you should always go up here and go save as copy. And then that will save it and apply those slow motion effects and also the filter uh, that I included in there before. And so you can see that you've got, you know, now I've got that video and then up here, I also have a copy of the video. I have two of them now, the original uh, and the one that I just applied the uh, filter effects to. Of course, they're the same exact video, obviously, just got the different effects in each one that I applied with the slow-mo. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you can also do this on, and this is another one I took. I got a bunch of different clips of him on the slide. If you edit, even if you didn't do that, you can always go to adjust speed and you can just change the speed, you know, to half time for a specific part. You don't have to do the long press to change the speed. Uh, you can adjust this, you know, to a specific part of the video and do a half or a fourth or whatever you want. And you can do it that way. But the long press to do it is, is easier and nicer in my personal opinion. So the next thing is the uh, generative edit. And this is really cool. So basically, if you have a photo like this one I took of these flowers, I was testing out S24 camera after the update it got yesterday. Samsung's been going crazy with the updates. If you long press on something, it'll find the objects and you can do a bunch of different things with them, right? If you long press this, you can take this and move it. And not only that, you, when you edit it like this, you can create it as a sticker, snap to shape, select manually, you can do all that stuff. You can also copy this if you want and paste it into another photo. So if I go like over here, paste from clipboard, now we'll paste these in here, I can resize them. I could put the flowers in here. I could save this as a copy. And now I've got the edit right there. Now the other thing you can do, long press on the photo here. Once you extract the objects there, you can see, you can save as a sticker or share that individual object. And to get the generative AI features, what you need to do is go down to edit here and then tap the Galaxy AI button on the side. Now here you can use the generative features. What I could do is I could draw something around like this sign and I could say, okay, I can touch and hold this now to move or delete it. So what I can do is I can take this over here, then I could rotate it and I could even then generate this. And what it will do is it'll fill in the background so that it still looks like the same wall that was behind the sign previously. Uh, and you can do this with faces, you can do it with whatever you want. Not just move, but you can also resize it as well. Now, you can see how well it looks. It looks, I mean, how good it looks. It looks quite nice, but of course, because this thing has the little sign uh, stake at the bottom, it looks kind of weird. But obviously, if you did this with a face, the way it filled in the wall in the background is absolutely fantastic, um, and it's very, very impressive. So it's, again, you can save this as a copy, and they do put the AI-generated watermark there at the very bottom. You see the Galaxy AI symbol. That's just to let you know that you use the generative AI features to do the generative fill. So I definitely recommend trying the slow-mo, the generative edit. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do inside gallery. A lot of those AI updates are hiding in there. Okay, so let's now go back. We hit those two. The next one is the new widgets and clock faces and lock screen edit in general. Let's talk a little bit about this. So if you go into the lock screen and you long press here, now we can open this. You'll see that there's a new option in here for widgets. And you can add pretty much any widgets that you want. You can see the stock ones are battery, calendar, clock, etc. However, if you go into clock face and you use Lockstar, you can actually add any of these widgets that you want. So once again, if you go back to Good Lock and let's go into the clock face app, for instance, if you go into the clock face app, first of all, you'll find a whole bunch of different clocks. You see all the different clocks you've gotten here. You can see the clock style here and you know, you can change a lot of things about the font, the way everything looks. Um, and then once you choose one of these particular clocks, you can also change all of the widgets that you have inside Lockstar. So if we go back to Good Lock, let's find Lockstar, go to the lock screen. Uh, you have the option to add widgets anywhere you want. So if you just tap in a free space, go to add widgets, you can add widgets from all of your apps. You noticed how on the lock screen editor, you were kind of limited, but if you have clock face and Lockstar from Good Lock together, you can get not only a bunch of new clocks, you can also get all the widgets 
that are available from all your apps, not just the stop Samsung apps. You know, these are Google Drive, Beeper. I use some of these widgets on my lock screen. You guys actually saw the ones that I had because I am using Lockstar as well. Let me go back and show you. I've got my Google Drive right there uh, on my always on display as one of my widgets, and that is using the good lock modules. So you can add a whole bunch of new stuff. Having widgets on the lock screen is really nice, and it's something Samsung added with One UI 6.1. Up next, customize alarms and reminders, wallpaper change. So instead of having just a color uh, on your wallpaper when you do an alarm or you do a reminder, you can now change what that looks like. So if we go into, we go into reminders really quickly. Got to go back to Samsung here. If you go into reminders and go ahead and tap on settings, you'll see down here with the alert type, you've got alert background now. If you go to alert background, instead of changing this to just a particular color like you could before, you can now change this to a particular photo. So you can change it to whatever photo you want. And you can also change this to give you some extra customization options as to how the alert looks. Now this also works with alarms. It's just a little bit nicer because it gives you a little more customization what your alarms and alerts look like. Instead of just having a full screen of purple, this looks a little bit nicer. It's a small touch, but it's definitely something that makes it nice and easier to use your phone and looks better on a daily basis. The next thing is the voice focus mode. So if we go into the voice focus, the way this works is if you go into calls, I'm gonna make a call here to UPS customer service. And once you're in your call, if you scroll to the very top of your quick settings, you'll see mic mode. It's a very simple one, but if you type on mic mode, you can now change this in One UI 6.1 to voice focus, which will give you better isolation for your voice. It'll make it easier for the person who's calling you to understand you, and also you get sort of a better dialogue. It'll be clear dialogue. And this is a feature I've been using a lot. Again, a very small change, but one that's very nice to have. The next one is the AI generated wallpapers and battery protection. So both of these are also kind of small, but if you long press on your home screen, go to wallpaper and style. If you go to change wallpaper, down here under creative, you'll see the generative wallpaper option. Now they're kind of limited. You have to choose a category and then you have to choose the color or the type. So like you can choose aquamarine and then you can choose vibrant hues and then it will generate the wallpaper for you. Now it's kind of limited. Like I said, you can't choose all the parameters and also it will have that Galaxy AI watermark, but they do give you some cool wallpapers. I personally still prefer to get mine from one for wall, which is an app I've used for years. You guys who've known the channel for a while probably know I use that primarily. It's where my wallpaper comes from here, but the generative AI wallpapers are cool to play around with if you're getting One UI 6.1 for the first time. The last thing is the battery protection. So if we go into battery, and now we have a couple of different battery protection features and that is three options now, basic, adaptive, and maximum. So basic, when your battery is charged to 100%, charging will stop until the battery level drops to 95 and charging will start again. Adaptive, use maximum while you're asleep and switch to basic before you wake up. This is probably the best one. It's also the new one here um, that's available with One UI 6.1. Maximum was the old one where it stops when it reaches 80%, but most people don't want that. Adaptive is the one I would recommend to try now that you get One UI 6.1 on the other devices, it's the one I've been testing out. Sometimes if I need you know, to make sure my phone's charged to 100, uh, I will use basic, but the adaptive is pretty reliable. The phone will kind of figure out when it needs to start charging up to that full mark. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, this overview of One UI 6.1, first 10 things to do. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon. Again, if you guys wanna check out my alpha link, sign up for the mystery box program for the newsletter there if you're buying any Samsung phones coming up. Appreciate you guys checking it out. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.